Well, hello there. <laughs> Careful. You might hurt someone with that blade. Ooh, such ferocity in your eyes, little hunter. Such anger and disdain for me. And I haven't even introduced myself. I am Countess Stefania Swan, though I doubt you have the common decency to kneel before me. And what would your name be? Ooh, the silent type. So mysterious and brooding. Hmm. Now the question arises. What brings you to my castle, my dear? Going by the sword in your hand, the... Holy symbol at your throat, and the stakes and hammer on your belt. I'll take it you're not here to spread the peaceful word of your shining saviour. Hmm. Have my little pets been causing your village trouble? Well, my werewolves only visit if my subjects are refusing to obey my laws. Such sweet little puppies, really. So obliging when you give them what they want. And if what they want is to sink their teeth into some fresh meat on occasion, who am I to refuse them? Oh, your father was one of the ones who went missing. And let me guess, you're here to avenge him, cut off the head of the snake, and plunder my castle of its riches, rescue my other prisoners, and ride home to Aslaki as the dawn breaks and a new age of peace sweeps over the land? I think not, my dear. How do I know the name of your village? Oh, lucky guess, I suppose. <laughs> you are a very long way from home. This is my domain. We play by my rules here, and the words of your shining saviour cannot find you. And after I'm done with you, neither with your friends or loved ones. Hmm. Tell me, little hunter, if you hate me so much, why haven't you slain me yet? You can't, can you? <laughs> oh, that fear in your eyes. Come on, amuse me. I'm right here, your sword pointed at my heart. Just one thrust and I'm gone. <laughs> ah! the first in a long while to draw blood, and a blessed blade, too. <sighs> I almost felt that. You are certainly a strong one. By now, most hunters who have sought me out would be crumbled husks at my feet. Now then, that sword is a little too dangerous. Throw it across the room. Remove your holy symbol, and unbutton your shirt a little. Let me see that pulse dance. Don't fight my influence, you'll only hurt yourself. And I prefer my thralls, unblemished. I can feel your will battling against me. You know in your heart that you've yearned for this. You told yourself that my beauty disgusted you, that I was nothing more than a tyrannical beast. But I know what you cannot resist. My voice. All those nights you've tossed in restless sleep, feeling my voice around you, warm as honey and soft as silk calling to you from afar. My dear, sweet vampire hunter, did you really think that it was anger that brought you to my doorstep? 
while your anger may guide your blade, your desire guided your heart. And now here you are, my dear. It seems almost a pity that my little game with you has ended, because, oh, how I have enjoyed toying with you. You've listened to my voice for so very long, even in your daylight hours. I know that you've let my beauty linger in your thoughts, that you've imagined the sweetness of my kiss and the poison that lies within. Surely you notice my ravens keeping watch over you and your siblings, informing me of your states of health and happiness. For years I have waited for you to come to me of your own volition, and now you cannot deny your desperation to drink deeply from that most forbidden of chalices. Well, now's your chance to taste it for yourself. Neo. Look at me. I said, look, look at, at me. me. Gaze upon the woman who has brought strife onto your lands, who casts a shadow across your sad, short life. Time is so greedy. I don't want him to snatch you up just yet. And there are so many ways for you to die out there. Disease, madness, the slow burn of old age. Would you rather squirm in the mud for another fifty years or so? Or live just one year longer in my arms? Oh, how you flinch from my touch. Shh. Relax. I'm just... Running my fingertips along your collarbone. Up your throat. Under your chin. And... Mm. Now, was that so bad? From the flush on your face, I'll take it you enjoyed that little taste. Your, your heart is racing. I can feel you continuing to fight against me, but don't worry, this won't take long. Ah, your neck looks so soft in the candlelight, so breakable. All it takes is a flick of my wrist, and I snap that elegant plinth of flesh and leave you to bleed out on the stones. But that would be a waste of such a fine wine. <sighs> the blood of the pious always tastes so sweet. Shh. It's all right. I've had my fill of you. For tonight, there's a room upstairs waiting for you, with damask drapes and blue roses by your bed, and locks on every window and door. Play by my rules, and I shall make your final days delicious. Disobey me, or try to flee. And I'll have a new head on my battlements. Now sleep. Fall into my arms and let my voice wash over you. Rest. And dream of the sin inside my kiss. You are awake. Good. I trust you had a peaceful rest. Oh, 
You are upset. But please do not be angry with me, dear guest. I did my best to make you comfortable after my mistress was sated by you. It is not by my doing that you are here. You came to the castle of your own free will. Mostly. Now, please try to calm yourself. I have prepared some tea to help settle your nerves. <sighs> I know that you are angry, but please do not break the good porcelain. It will just be more for me to clean up. And one night, three hundred and sixty-four nights from now, when my mistress is done with you, I will be the one to clean up your broken body and dispose of it accordingly. Keep that in mind. No, it is not a threat. It is inevitable. While I am nothing more than a maid, designed to submit and serve in every way possible, a little respect would be appreciated. I am simply fulfilling my function, and will do my utmost to make your stay here an enjoyable one. Thank you, dear guest. I appreciate your apology. My name? How sweet. Most guests do not even bother to ask. You may call me Serafina. Now then, it is too late in the day for breakfast or lunch. But would you like some afternoon tea? Very well. What kind of tea do you prefer? Understood. If you would like to freshen up first, I have been instructed to tend to your needs, escort you around the castle, and make sure you do not get lost. I have informed the kitchen. Your refreshments are being prepared. By the time we get to the conservatory, afternoon tea shall be served. I hope you like chocolate cake and fresh strawberries. There is another who shall be joining you, and she is especially fond of berries. Oh, she is not a guest, like you, but she is of high standing, and a dear friend of my mistress. She is looking forward to meeting you. And here on the left is the music room. You have the daylight hours to your leisure. So perhaps you would like to learn how to play something. You have a whole year to learn something new. Or perhaps you would like to learn a language instead. The library is in the east wing of the castle, and so long as you are careful with the books, my mistress would not mind if you borrowed them. Where is the Countess? My mistress is sleeping. It is a little after 3.40 p.m. But she should be awake when the sun sets. Dinner tonight should be especially decadent. I am told that back in Aslaki, goulash is a particular favourite. In your honour, we are preparing that dish with boar meat, 
red wine and potato dumplings. The Countess is as generous as she is loving, and wants you to be happy here. Maybe things will be different this time. You seem fixated on my face, dear guest. Is something the matter? You think so? Ha 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 My resemblance to the mistress is rather striking. My maker was once a guest, just like you. A long, long time ago. She built me as a gift to her, so that when her time was up, she would always have a reminder of the time they shared together. I was once more than a maid, but time passed. The Countess became bored of me. She no longer smiled when she saw me, and made me a maid instead. You think me melancholy, I can tell, but do not be saddened, I am built to serve, and there are many things I can do. I am grateful to have a mistress as wonderful as she, and you should be too. Vampire hunters do not live long in these lands, especially in the castle of blue roses. This is the Grand Conservatory. I would advise that you stay close. Some of the plants are a little... overly affectionate with strangers. So, this is the Countess's latest distraction. Ah, oh, rather disappointing if I'll be honest. You're nice enough to look at, but nothing special as far as I can tell. That is unkind to say, my lady. <laughs> my apologies, that was rude of me. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Shiloh Blackquills, advisor to the Countess and High Witch of Orlock Forest. I'll take it from here, Seraphina. You're dismissed. Enjoy your afternoon tea, dear guest. Well, the tea's going to get cold. No strawberries are especially delicious. I would know. I grew them myself. Take a seat. Just a word of advice. Don't get on Serafina's bad side. She's well-crafted, but she has some gears loose somewhere, and malfunctions sometimes happen. But don't worry, it's not as though she's accidentally slain a guest before. But all I shall say is that the castle has many excellent places to hide bodies, and I would recommend you investigate all hidden nooks and crannies before your time is up and the Countess gets bored of you. Gods, you look pale. Don't tell me you're scared. I thought you were a fearless vampire hunter, sent by your shining saviour to slay all of us dark and twisted sinners. How disappointing. One thing about me that the Countess values above all is my insight. I have a knack for noticing what others try to hide. And when she becomes infatuated with a new... pet, her vision narrows. Why am I telling you this? Because I can tell you are different from the others that came before. Firstly, you're a hunter, and I'm still surprised that you've survived this long. 
Secondly, and most importantly, even though you're being civil, I can feel that anger behind your eyes. Hold on to it. You might just survive this. Things are changing, and your arrival was exactly what we needed. Don't flinch. I'm just ensuring our chat is a little more private, but my spell won't last long, so I'll be brief. Drink your tea and have another bite of cake. We're just a witch and a hunter getting to know one another. The Countess has eyes everywhere. Even the garden is listening. If you want to make it out of this and see your family again, I'd advise playing along with her games. But don't give any indication that you're deceiving her, or she will kill everyone you love and save you till last to prolong your pain. But of course, I could be entirely wrong. You might enjoy being the Countess's pet, and who wouldn't? Being in the company of a woman like that. So long as you know that around her, you need to learn to crawl before you have her permission to walk. Here, let me refill your cup. Tonight should be special. You are the guest of honour, after all. Oh, I won't be dining with you. I have work to do. The full moon is almost here and I need to prepare. The stars are unclear, my crystals are cloudy, and the spirits are oddly restless. But you don't need to concern yourself with my craft. All you need to worry about for tonight is enjoying yourself. Don't worry, she won't poison the feast. But more than likely, expect wine, acorns, marsala, and maybe even oysters from the coast. What can I say? She's a sophisticated woman, very particular about how her food tastes, and I'll bet she's just dying to get another bite out of you. <laughs> well now, Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? I trust those new clothes feel as good as they look. They're made of the finest silks and leathers, and they're probably finer than anything you've worn before. Still as stoic as ever. But surely one little thank you won't hurt. You're most welcome. Now, please be seated. I'm glad that you accepted my invitation to dine with me this evening. A very smart move, indeed. For the thought that refusing my requests may impress me with their courage, sadly I grew bored of them quicker, and I seldom keep anything that ceases to entertain me. <laughs> indeed, with the exception of Serafina, but she's proven her usefulness and devotion to me time and again. On that note, how have the servants been treating you? That's good to hear, and I agree. Serafina is rather unsettling to some. From her voice and mannerisms, to her very existence is a revolutionary piece of technology. But I trust that someone as strong as you isn't shaken that easily. And she is quite a wonder to behold and treasure. And speak of the devil. Dinner is served, mistress. Thank you, my dear. Now leave us in peace. Now eat, drink, enjoy yourself, my darling. For the my drinking... Isn't it obvious? <laughs> but since you asked, it's a rosy 18-year-old vintage. Rich, sweet, with the slightest aroma of vanilla. And naivety. 
I think its name was... Laura? No, I can't recall. It was gifted to me from a friend. Is the food to your liking? Good. I can't taste it myself, nor can Serafina, but Lady Blackwills assured me that it was delicious. Mm. Excuse my gaze while I watch you dine, but I do enjoy drinking you in. <laughs> now, now, there's no need to be rude. You're my guest. And while I am making efforts to make you comfortable, I can look at you as long as I please. And I do enjoy watching you, as I have done for many, many years. Mortals are such fascinating creatures, and few others of my kind take the time to observe them in detail. You, for example. Of course I see the broad strokes, such as your... Gorgeous features, your wonderful body, and the fire in your heart. But I also see the calluses on your fingers from your lengthy practice with weaponry. Since you were a child, and at the behest of your father, I see those tiny scars on your chin and cheekbone from when you were seven and your sister's owl bit you because you tried to pet him without permission. I see the slightest tan lines on your wrist from where you once wore your rosary, but you buried it with your mother's body. Such pain and loss. Yet here do you stand, well, sit. You think I know nothing of this, how wrong you are, my darling. Do you think that these hundreds of years have been filled with pleasure and mirth? True, having guests such as yourself alleviates my spirits for a short while, but the rest of my existence is spent on ruling as best I can. Why do you think my kingdom has never been invaded? Yes, I am a cruel countess, and my lands reflect my rule. But my lands create strong men and women, hardened by the pain and the cold. And those who are lazy and weak <sighs> just seem to disappear into the mists. Now eat, it's getting cold. And my meal is starting to congeal. Do you dance? No? Well, you do now. <laughs> dance with me. There we go. I knew hunters were quick on their feet. <laughs> oh, come now, don't look so dour. I don't think I've ever seen someone look so unhappy while dancing. This is more luxury than you've ever known in your sad little life. I could have snapped your neck, yet I give you a seat at my table and make my suitors green with envy by pampering you and holding someone as sublime as myself in your arms. Is that really so terrible? I disgust you. Mm. You're so ungrateful. I need to be careful, or I might spoil you with my affections. Just for that, you're forbidden to call me anything except... For countess or mistress. Understood? Good. Now, for all I've given you, say thank you. Thank you, what? That's better. Thank you, mistress. Hmm. 
Now then, hold me close, dance with me, and rid all thought of your life outside these walls. I am all you shall ever need. You're a stubborn one, but, oh, you are going to be fun breaking in. Do not worry, my darling. It's just my fellow children of the night. Ah, oh, what music they make. Listen. Hear the crescendo of howls echoing over the dark valleys and ivory peaks of my kingdom, perfumed by the roses I grow in my castle and slick with freshly haunted blood. No, I'll drink from you later tonight. For now, a kiss will suffice. Feel my fingers run through your hair, pulling you close. It's alright. Breathe me in until all those memories fade away. Memories of incense and sermons of fury and disgust. I can feel your heart racing for me and me alone. Mm. 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 That almost felt real. <laughs> And you say that I disgust you. Let's not fight tonight, my darling. Close your eyes. Enjoy the feeling of my arms around you. And let the symphony of the night embrace you. Don't move. Lift your hands, slowly. You make a sound. You die. You reach for a weapon. You die. You try to run. You die. Understood. You're a long way from your village, human and I can smell the silver in your pocket and the blood on your hands. You've slain many foes. Mm, some ghouls, a witch, even a young vampire. You're a hunter, aren't you? And you're dumb enough to come out here alone looking for big, bad wolves to hunt. <laughs> Give me one reason I shouldn't tear you to pieces. What? Your sibling is the Countess's latest guest. Well, we'll see about that. Hands behind your back. Move. I'm taking you to the chiefess. If you are related to them, she'll know. She sees all. Yourselves, all of you! Darrow, you better have a good fucking reason for bringing a human into our midst. They claim to be related to the Countess's guest. 
I brought them to you to see if they speak the truth. And if they're lying... <laughs> well, they're a hunter. Tender muscles and strong bones. Thought you could use a snack. <laughs> you did well to bring them to me then. Strip them of their weapons. You five, scout the surrounding hills on the river. Make sure no other hunters are skulking about. Well now, let's take a good look at this human that thought it was a good idea to go wandering through werewolf territory. You were meaning to come here. You're even dumber than I thought. You're practically a child. Barely a hunter. I'll bet that blood I can smell in you got there by luck. Not by talent or ferocity. Hmm. But I do recall a familiar scent. Not too far off from yours. Another hunter. A man. Older. A seasoned killer. A little too rebellious for his own good. Which is why the Countess ordered us to kill him. Hmm. I half expected you to come flying at me teeth bared, hungry for vengeance. But I think we both know your eyes are set on a bigger quarry. If it's any consolation, he died on his feet, fearless and defiant to the end. You should be proud. Your father died like a hunter should. I'd watch that boastful tongue of yours. True, you share his blood, but you're yet to prove your skills to me. Do you even have any idea who you're standing in front of? Close, but not quite. In our culture, we don't have alphas. We have leaders. Male or female, doesn't matter. As long as they're smart, quick and don't hesitate to tear open the throats of our enemies. I'm Scarlet Moon, chiefess of the werewolves of Velsvania, and you would do well to show me some fucking respect. You carry a message. From who? And why should I care? The High Witch of Orlock Forest... She took the form of a raven and whispered it to you. (laughs) That almost sounds like her. But why would our esteemed friend sully her time with the likes of you? Maybe she's taking charity cases now. (laughs) Yes, Pharaoh mentioned that. I can imagine a lot of villagers are running around claiming to be related to the Countess's guests in the hopes of getting privileged treatment. Anything for another scrap of bread. But the fact that you're a hunter too, like this fabled guest is, it's pretty much the only reason why I've allowed you to live this long. Oh, and this. What is it? Oh... Just a lock of hair, given to us by our supposedly mutual friend, taken from the head of the Countess's guest. And luckily for you, you carry a similar scent. You smell of monster blood, incense and mud, not to mention... You have the heart of a survivor. I can see that defiance and ferocity beating fiercely in you. Guess it runs in the family. How can I see that? One of the many gifts of being the leader of this ancient pack. So spit it out! What is this message? Infatuation has made her blind. In a few months, the blood moon will rise, and her defences will fall. 
Hmm. I've smelt the Blood Moon's arrival for weeks now. It seems that the Witch has as well. If she entrusted that message to you, then you must be well aware of our plans. The Countess has torn your family apart. She's selfish, cruel, and vain. And were it not for her storming in with swords and horses, these lands would still be ours. You are confused, child. After all the long hours of teaching you the finer details on slaughtering monsters, did your father or mother ever sit beside the hearth with you and tell stories of werewolves? Led by a giant, beautiful wolf made of stars and with eyes like the moon. Or perhaps they spoke of the lost city of Umbramorn, kingdom of witches, the city of candles and cats. Yes, they were once real, a very long time ago, before that fucking bitch came. Now she lives in that hilltop castle, hoarding whatever scraps of wealth still cling to these lands, and keeping the once powerful High Witch on a very short leash. Our ally's ancestral home, Umbramorn, is now nothing more than the brittle bones that surround that house of horrors. She broke our ancestors, domesticated them, slaughtered and skinned our loved ones to decorate her halls. The wind carries those gruesome scents to us while we patrol her land like the sweet little puppies she thinks us to be. Now, we're expected to bow when she graces us with her presence and flinch from the sight of her fangs. Well, whose fangs are bigger? Mine or hers? As much as I love the idea of sinking my teeth into the Countess, we need to be patient. We wait until her guest decides the time is right to strike. They're the ones she speaks to the most at the moment, more than Shiloh. Let's just hope that they see her as the monster she truly is. But for now, come join us for a drink. You've come all this way to find us. The least we can do is show you some good werewolf hospitality. <laughs> Oh, do you require something, dear guest? It is very late. You should return to your bed. You can't sleep. Well, what do you wish to do? I could order something from the kitchen for you. A walk around the castle. Are you sure that is wise? Dear guest, you would be better off to return to your bed and try to sleep. Is that an order? No, I am just instructed to keep you safe. There are things that linger in these halls, and while you have been Lucky to avoid them these past months. Your safety is my prime responsibility. You still wish to wander? Very well. I shall be a few paces behind you. The Countess is reading. It would be best if you didn't disturb her. No, get back here! <sighs> Who is it that disturbs me? Oh, it's you. You're up early. 
or am I up late? <laughs> Regardless, I'm glad you joined me. You're not interrupting me at all, my dear. You just caught me off guard. If the nightgown wasn't an indication of that, it's not too revealing, is it? <laughs> My, how you begin to blush. Don't be so shy. I was just enjoying some time alone before heading to my bedchambers. If I had known you'd be visiting me, I would have brought one of the beautiful furs from my room for both of us to stay warm beneath. But the fire is still blazing bright, and the dawn is yet to make its... Uh, unwelcome appearance. So come in. Sit. Choose a book and join me on the lounge in front of the fireplace. Read with me until the sun rises. Here, yeah. rest your head on my lap. Make yourself comfortable. Did you have any interesting dreams? No? Oh well. I suppose that's better than being plagued with nightmares. What am I reading? It's rather dull, actually. Silly peasant stories about the surrounding lands. Tales about cats, wolves, and other beasts. But it's a gift from Shiloh, so I thought I should finish flipping through it. But to be honest, I'm more interested in the delivery of books from across the sea that arrived the other day. If you'd like, you can join me here tomorrow night as well, and we can read some together. Or I can read to you, if you prefer. Good. I'd like that too. Hmm? What was that? <sighs> yes. Serafina is always posted outside your chambers while you sleep. I'm sorry that you find her presence unnerving. Many of my guests do. <clears throat> Did. And others rather liked having someone waiting on them hand and foot, which is her primary function, to keep you safe from anything nasty lurking in the shadows, and to ensure that you are content while you live under my roof. You've heard them at night, haven't you? The whispers of ancient souls that still linger in this castle and its grounds. Old memories of battles won a long, long time ago. Hmm. I know that look. You'll think that Serafina is my little carrion crow, ready to pick your remains apart when I'm done with you. But you should know that she's merely an extension of my will, and the reason that she watches you so closely is because I don't trust you, nor do you trust me, and we both know you likely never will. Not fully. Which is why, after all these years... I can tell when she's listening from behind a door. Serafina, go tidy up my guest's bedchamber. They'll be staying with me tonight. <sighs> Sorry about that. <sighs> now then, where were we, my dear? Ah, yes. Talking about the complicated trust issues between a vampire and a hunter being lovers. 
But let's save that conversation for another night. Hmm. You don't mind if my fingers explore a little, do you? I do so enjoy petting your hair. It's so wonderfully soft. And the skin along your temples is like velvet under my fingertips. I've seen you every night these past few months. I've danced with you, dined with you, kissed you more times than I can count. And all the while, your will is yet to break. But this soft flutter in your veins when you look at me like this, your elegant features framed by the light of the candles, the flush that rises along your delicious neck. This you can't hide. I've noticed how that look in your eyes has shifted, ever so slightly, letting your gaze drift over my body just a little longer, a little hungrier. So, what are we going to do about this? Let's start with something we'll both enjoy. Let me take that book off your hands and set up properly. Where do I sit? Hmm. How about... here? Yeah. Now then, this is a much more enjoyable sight than you'll find in a book. <laughs> if you just put your hands on my hips, here, and I put my hands on your shoulders, here, hmm. hold me close. Please. I know, I know. My skin is so cold to the touch. But after I feed later tonight, it'll be much warmer. But not from you. I've already taken so much. Tonight, let me give back just a little. Mm. I'm surprised you have the stamina to walk, <laughs> considering how intense last night was. I haven't had a night that passionate oh, in a long time. You hunters really know how to test the monster's limits. <laughs> Come back to bed, my love. You're so nice and warm, and I want to hold you for a few more hours. I... I can't come over to you. The sun hasn't set yet. It's too early. Is there enough cloud cover? Very well. Hmm, you're right. Looks like a storm's brewing. Just relax, my dear. Yeah. Let me slip my arms around your waist and rest my head on your shoulder. Mm. 
I could stay like this forever, looking over my kingdom with you in my arms, feeling the softness of your skin, the flutter of your pulse. Mm. Mm. Your next two flushes when I kiss you there. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get too carried away last night. As I'm sure you've heard from those gossiping villagers, sometimes my hunger can overwhelm my more lascivious desires. And cleaning up afterwards is such an inconvenience to the servants. I'm glad that all they need to take care of is a broken bed frame and some torn bed sheets and picking up the trail of clothes that we left but that's what they're there for for now I'm tired come back to bed wrap your arms around me I love feeling your heart beat against my back. Mm. And I know that you love letting your hands explore. I don't think there was a single part of either one of us that went unexplored last night. My hands and lips found every scar you hide. And I know you flinched at first, but slowly, very slowly, you relaxed and enjoyed yourself. I'm truly touched that you let me see you so vulnerable. I could tell that that was difficult for you. Thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed yourself, and I hope that you hate me a little less after what we experienced together. I rather enjoyed that pinch of spice while we were tangled in the sheets. It was refreshing to have someone as passionate and as daring as you, my love. I hope that you managed to get out some of your repressed aggression. And I hope that one day you come to genuinely enjoy my company. You... you do? Even uh, after everything I've done? Uh, I... <laughs> You have me lots for words, my love. I've never desired someone as badly as I've desired you. Perhaps because you're so different from all those that came before. And you're the most dangerous guests I've ever welcomed into my home. Every night that's passed, I've awaited you taking a risk and breaking into my bedchambers with a makeshift stake and hammer. But you didn't. If it counts for anything, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I issued the order to have your father killed. But when you're in command of an entire country, with other nobles waiting for any sign of weakness so they could tear you to pieces. It means making difficult decisions. And sometimes you need to sacrifice a few troublemakers to keep the peace. I don't expect you to ever forgive me. But all I ask is that you begin to understand what it means to be the ruler of these unforgiving lands. And... You'll soon get to meet some of those thorns in my side. In a few weeks, there's going to be a grand masquerade ball, and I want you at my side. You've got thick skin, 
and you now know when to hold your tongue. <laughs> so long as you remain faithful to me, no one will dare harm you. But I trust that you'll be on your best behavior. So, will you be my date? <laughs> Thank you, my love. <sighs> but that's far in the future. Let's just enjoy this beautiful moment. Let me rest my head on your chest and run your fingertips across my skin. Mm. Like that, my love. I admired your ambition, but don't let those hands get too carried away. I need to refresh myself before we go for another round. Are you sure? Thank you, my love. Now relax and arch your neck for me the way that I like it. Mm. Mm. Much better. Thank you, my love. Now, close your eyes and hold me close. I don't want to leave this bed for at least three more hours. <laughs> Hold still, dear guest. I've almost finished tailoring your waistline. Flinch, and I might accidentally prick you with my pins. It's quite an honour to be invited to this auspicious occasion. The Grand Midnight Masquerade is the highlight of the season. Even my creator wasn't invited, and she was the forefront mind in alchemy, sculpture, and clockworks. But you should have a wonderful time. Every noble in the land shall be in attendance, including some from across the sea. Kings, princesses, dukes, and diplomats, and their slaves. I'm sure you'll fit right in. Now then, I've finished your costume. Here's your mask. The Countess will be waiting for you in the hall adjacent to the stairways in the Grand Ballroom. Since you're her lover, you'll be announced together. All eyes will be on you, so at least pretend you're excited to be there. Have a wonderful night, dear guest. Oh my, you look good enough to eat, my love. Mm. Mm. Thank you for agreeing to this. It means so much to me. And I do ask that you be on your best behavior tonight, no matter what you see or hear. The way you act reflects upon me, not only as a countess, but as a vampire too. What kind of things will you see? Ah, traditions that have been done for thousands upon thousands of years and have grave consequences for me if I do not satisfy those vultures downstairs. 
Take my arm, hold your head high, and stay close. I won't let those beasts devour you. Shiloh, dear, you know what to do. Of course, Countess. Take it all in, dear guest. See them, see her, as the monsters they truly are. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? It is my honor to present your host for this, the 571st Grand Midnight Masquerade, the illustrious conqueror of Elsvania, Countess Stefania Swan. Escorting her is one of the fiercest hunters in the land, a paragon of strength, wit, and courage. While there are many here that I need to speak to tonight, most of them on my own, there was one guest in particular I wanted to see, and I wanted him to see you with me. Well, my beloved Countess, it's been far too long. You look resplendent as always. Not long enough. I think we can both agree. But you do look especially handsome tonight. <laughs> Indeed. I'll take it that this is your new toy. My lover. Come now, your highness. At least try to be civil tonight. You're in my home, after all. Huh. Very well. Allow me to make introductions. My love, this is the Vampire King of the Pale Hinterlands. His kingdom is on the other side of the Northern Mountains. Your Highness, this is my lover, a seasoned monster hunter, and the fiercest fighter in my kingdom. Hmm. Is that so? Indeed. They've done an excellent job of keeping any invasive beasts from encroaching on my lands. And I've never known someone as passionate or as loyal as them. Now then, if you two will please excuse me, I need to greet my other guests. I'll take it that you're fitting in nicely at the Castle of Blue Roses with that doll, Serafina, doting on you hand and foot, and the Countess herself lavishing affection upon you. Just don't get too comfortable, Hunter. You might have her affections for now, but if there's one thing I know about her, is that she's as ruthless as she is fickle. This is the same woman who took the head of the High Enchantress of Umbramon, who severed the ancestral ties of the werewolves, who devours hunters like you by the handful. And while I'm intrigued as to why she's taken interest in a hunter, she's still the same woman I knew and loved all those centuries ago. She's the vampire I, I went to war with, to bed with, then faced across the opposite side of the board. Little has changed, except her standards, but I'll give credit where it's due. You certainly are an intoxicating specimen. Even with her scent all over you, I can smell the blood in your veins. You certainly are a rare breed, aren't you? And since you'd be wanting to please your mistress and ensure that everything goes smoothly for her, you resist the urge to try to stick through my heart, won't you? 
<laughs> At least for tonight. Good. Hmm. You're lucky that she's claimed you. If you happened to cross the borders between our nations, I might have just snatched you up myself. Though, you probably would find my company a little less enjoyable. I'm not a patient king and have a bad habit of breaking the playthings that disappoint me. But perhaps she hasn't so much broken your body as much as broken your will through kindness, kisses, and whispers in the dark. And now your whole world revolves around her like a good little servant. Ah, perfect timing, my dear Countess. Apologies for leaving you, my love. I trust that His Majesty has behaved himself. Good. Now then, if you will excuse us, I believe the next vaults is about to begin. But of course. I hope you enjoy your evening. <laughs> I know I will. Ah, now then, this is more like it. I do adore dancing with you, my love. You've gotten so much smoother over the past few months. But I have to ask, did the king mention anything to you that you'd care to tell me? Ah, yes, we were former lovers. Formidable ones at that. But anything he told you was intended to sow seeds of doubt in your mind. He's resented me ever since we parted. And at gatherings like this, it brings out the monster in both of us. And he will say anything to ruin whatever joy I have in my life. So I hope you don't take his spiteful words to heart. Truthfully, if we had stayed together, his kingdom would have devoured mine. I did what I needed to do to... Esteemed guests, the time has come for the highlight of your evening. Oh. Oh no. Dinner is served. I am so sorry, my love, but I had to do this. It's tradition for gatherings of this nature. So please, stay by my side, and don't do anything. These villagers have been especially chosen for your pleasure this evening. Each one a prime example of the beauty, strength, and virtues of Velsvania. As per tradition, first come, first served. Bon appétit. Stop, my love. Don't try to save them, you can't. All you can do is hope that they were enough for those ravenous creatures. If you intervene, they'll tear you apart. And I won't be able to save you. Just keep dancing with me. Focus on my voice. Focus on me. Ignore those beautiful beasts. Just stay quiet and remember your place. I promise I'll make it up to you tonight. It's just me, dear guest, but stay silent. It's almost three in the morning, and there's a rat scuttling around the castle. It's time for a late night hunt, and I require 
your assistance. Where is the Countess? We'd best not disturb her. She's resting in her coffin after the masquerade. The evening took quite a toll on her. An unexpected toll on her. Indeed, it is art, especially since she asked me to prepare her chambers for you two to enjoy yourselves this evening after the last guest departed. Yet she was quite exhausted after the masquerade. Is this unexpected of her? Indeed, she is normally so thrilled by the night's events that she continues to dance until dawn, which is why I need you to go to her bedchambers and watch over her coffin while she sleeps, while I investigate the rest of the castle. How sweet of you to worry. But I'll be fine on my own. I'm not as fragile as I look. Yes, my arms just happen to double as swords. Speaking of which, here's yours. And if even the thought of harming my mistress while she lies sleeping, crosses your mind. Know that Shiloh has ways of discovering all kinds of nasty little thoughts inside your head. Thoughts that I will disapprove of greatly. Now go, get to her quickly. You're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be passed out cold in your room, where I could finish you off quickly. Unless... Fuck! The Hunter Constitution. The drugs didn't work on you. Regardless, you're still just a human. But you'll die like the pathetic guard dog you are. Not in my goddamn castle. What? <sighs> Hand me, you bitch! Oh, are you alright, my love? Good. Do you know where Serafina is? Out on patrol? Ah, she really is the perfect maid, isn't she? Don't worry. She'll be on the lookout for other vermin that might be skulking around. Now then, to deal with this overly ambitious rat. The moment I tasted that herb in my goblet, I swallowed down the rest, but made sure I excused myself to choke it up before its effects kicked in. Then I just had to play along and pretend they worked. I had a feeling that one of my darling guests would try to cause trouble, but an assassination attempt this blatantly confident? Oh, my dear Vampire King. You and I are going to have a long talk. My love, while I'm holding his incredibly fragile neck, would you mind removing his weapons and that... Irritating holy symbol. Don't. You. Dare. 
silence. Some wooden stakes. Looks to be made of snake wood, no less. This little rat did his research. Some garlic, a hammer, even a silver dagger. <laughs> Ugh, blessed by the church. Put them on the table over there, out of reach. There's the decanter by the lounge. Feel free to pour yourself a drink and take a seat, darling. I'm going to ask him some questions, and I want you to keep an eye on him in case you notice anything. Now then, where were we? <clears throat> ah, yes. You were going to tell me why you came here. To kill you and your pathetic excuse for a lover. <sighs> On whose orders? And don't be naughty and lie to me. I'll know. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> Perhaps. But I want to hear you say it. The Vampire King. Ah, oh, my beloved old flame. You're becoming predictable. Are there any other rats scurrying about that I need to concern myself with? Uh, uh, no. It was just me. Good to know. Ah, <sighs> my love. Do you want to know the reason why he continues to cause trouble for me? Why he sends these delightful little snacks from time to time? Earlier tonight, I told you that if we had stayed together, his kingdom would have devoured mine. When we were lovers, I only ruled a small part of Elsvania. He didn't desire me for the lands I held, or the power I wielded over my small kingdom. He loved me for my beauty, wit, charm, and indeed my bloodlust. I discovered his battle plans for charging over the mountains and slaughtering every last werewolf and witch in the land, expanding his kingdom and usurping the balance between us vampire nobles. It would have thrown our society into chaos. And after taking Vasvania, he sought to rule our society with an iron fist, turning mortals like you my beloved, into slaves bred for slaughter. So I rallied my forces and beat him to it. Instead of killing the werewolves and witches, I conquered them and made them bend the knee. I had to cripple them, destroy their power structures by killing their leaders. But I let them live in exchange for me remaining silent about his intentions of conquest, he swore that he would not seek retribution against me. But he enjoys reminding me of this agreement by keeping me on my toes. I did what I needed to do, even if it meant my subjects resented me, and I destroyed the love between the king and I. Which... Which is why he sends his regards. <laughs> My skin, it's burning. Bastard had holy water stashed away somewhere. No, no, I didn't get it in my face. My neck, my chest, it hurts. It's Serafina. He, it's all right, he's dead. But please... Hurry. It hurts so much. <sighs> Dear guest, may I come in? No. 
Papa. Why not? You wish to be left alone. But one of my core functions is to attend to your every need. And how can I serve you if I'm to remain here, outside the library doors? Am I to simply sit and wait until I gain your permission to enter? I will take that silence as a yes. Since you seem content to sit alone in the library and read, I will attend to the Countess. She needs me. Oh, forgive my disturbing you, Hunter. There's some books I require. Go back to yours. In case you were curious, the Countess is recovering quickly. By tomorrow evening, she will be back to her old self again. For the most part. You're either delighted by this news or frustrated. But given your... <laughs> well-guarded expression, it could be either. If you'd like my advice, it is my job after all. Join her for dinner tomorrow. She's in a rather delicate mood. And you joining her of your own free will would absolutely earn her favour. The Countess is a vain woman, and the assassin's attempt wounded her ego more than her beauty. If a rat like him can manage to sneak past her defences... What about a more sinister threat? Just an idle thought that's been popping up recently, but something you should keep in mind since you're her closest companion. Hmm? Did you say something? Was she right about what? I... Yes. She did indeed conquer us, and take the head of the former High Enchantress after raising Umbramore to the ground. The rest of us retreated to Orlock Forest, and I rose to lead them as the new High Enchantress, as well as be the Countess's advisor in matters of the ancient laws of this land. What else did she speak of last night? Her history with the Vampire King? Huh. I'm rather taken aback that she told you. The nature of her relationship with the King is a very sensitive, private matter. I'm surprised that she told you something so... intimate. But just keep in mind, there was a dead man in the room and your time with her is coming to a close. Her little secret might die with you. But since you're so full of secrets already, and you've come so far, there is something you should know. Because I like you, no, I respect you. So much more than anyone else in this tomb. You need to know why Umbra Morn was laid low and why this castle was built in its place, reusing the very same stones that were once Umbra Morn. The Count. Stefania Swan is so lonely. 
the loneliest soul that I have ever encountered, and at least in the top three of the most depraved. She has spent nearly a thousand years alone, lovers fleeting now and then, but still fiercely protecting the kingdom that she stole from my people. Umbra Morn sat atop a knot of magical ley lines that run across this vast country and drawing power from lands and worlds beyond. The earth, the air, the very foundations of this castle are teeming with magical potential. Why do you think I'm still her advisor after all these years? The Vampire King sought to claim this power for himself and use it to fulfill his own twisted agenda. The Countess got to it first, and while I disapprove of her use of this power, She's more interested in defending it rather than exploiting it. <sighs> After your year with her is over, when she decides that you have nothing more to offer her physically, and she ends your pathetic mortal existence, you don't get to leave. You've heard the whispers on those sleepless nights, haven't you? Spiteful souls filled with bitterness and regret. But the most loyal of them all is the most dangerous. Forgive my intrusion, my lady. I can tell you're both deep in thought. Ah, oh, there's no problem at all, my dear. I have good news. The Countess is healing quickly, and shall be back to her usual lovely self within a few nights. Did you find what you needed, my lady? I'm sure you have work to do, and must return to your tower promptly. I can assist your search if- I Yes, I've found all I needed. Thank you, Serafina. You're dismissed. I believe the Countess's guest wished to be left alone. No, the Countess's commands take priority over yours, my lady. Yours as well, dear guest. She has instructed me to remain at your side until she recovers. For safety precautions. Now then, Shiloh, shouldn't you... Be skulking back to your tower? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Please excuse me, dear guest. Now then, please feel free to continue reading. Shall I perhaps get you some tea? No? Are you worried that something nasty might be slipped into your drink? Just like what happened with my poor mistress. It's strange, really, how that assassin got so lucky with hiding that tiny flask of holy water up his sleeve. Especially... After you're the one who searched him. I would have thought that your keen hunter's senses would have spotted something like that. Perhaps love is making you soft. Or is hatred making you cunning? I may have been asked to cater to your every need, but I will protect my mistress 
As long as there is life in me. Even if it means breaking her favorite toy. Just remember, dear guest, when my mistress is done with you, I will be the one to clean up your broken body. Because long after you're gone, I'll be here. I'll always be here. Ready to welcome the next delicious little distraction. Now then, dear guest, I shall leave you to your book, but don't fret. I won't be far if you require anything more from me. Glad to know you can keep up with us, Hunter. Your father trained you well. Thought we were going to lose you for a moment back there at the ravine. But no, you leapt across fearlessly. (laughs) Damn right, Hunter. You did learn from the best. Yeah, we hate your kind for a good reason. But we admire skill when we see it. Like last night's drinking contest. Darrow. What? They drank half the pack under the table. And they almost beat you, Scarlet. (laughs) Almost. (laughs) Yeah, normally drinking before a mission is a no-go. But thank the moon for our amazing constitution. And yours for that matter. If you weren't the hunter we hoped you are, I was planning on leaving your hungover ass back in the woods. But no, here you are, still keeping pace with us in the dead of night. What did I expect? (laughs) Well, you're just a human, so my expectations were low. And while I appreciate your enthusiasm, you should lower your voice. Planning is great around the campfire, where we know that none of the Countess's bats or ravens are watching. But when we're moving, we need to hold our tongues. Try your best to blend in with us. Those pelts will help to mask your scent, and any passing scouts will need to take a second glance. But keep your head low and move swiftly. We're meeting a friend out by the northern forests. She can give us information on what our next move should be as well as how your sibling is doing. I know you're worried about them. It's been months of waiting, and I can't begin to imagine how you're feeling. I'd want to tear that castle down too if I had one of my pack kept prisoner inside those walls. But we've been waiting years for this, and all the signs are saying that the blood moon is almost upon us. Scoff all you want, asshole but there's ancient laws only the wolves and witches of this land understand. Laws we must obey if we want to win this. That bitch is an intruder. The land, air, and magic are constantly battling against her, taking from her as much as it can, hurting her however it can, in efforts to drive her away. We're just being the extra oomph that Velsvania needs to get rid of her for good. Quick, get down. I smell something. Hunter, ready your crossbow. Everyone, unsheath your claws. Hold. On my mark. Scarlet, wait. 
It's not the Countess. Indeed, it isn't. Hold on just a moment. There we go. No one can see us or hear us for the next hour. Thanks, Shiloh. It's good to see you, old friend. They gave us all a bit of a scare. Thanks for the warning, by the way. Sorry about that, but I couldn't let anyone know I was slipping away from the castle. And I need to get back as soon as I can. Something isn't sitting right with me. The ley lines are trying to tell me something, but their words are... strangled, somehow. Yeah, I've sensed that too. What do you mean, strangled? The knot of ley lines underneath the castle is being abused. Again! Being this close to the castle, I feel it even more. Likewise, I've been in my tower trying to figure out what's going on, reading the stars and the signs when I can, but it's... It's just like last year. We're fucking done chasing our tails. When are you going to get us inside, Shiloh? The Countess has exploited our lands for the last time. Either you sneak us all in, or we storm the gates ourselves. Everyone, just calm down. Trust me, I want her gone just as much as all of you. My witches are readying themselves in the forest. But it will take time. We need to wait for the final word from the Countess's guest. Speaking of which... You, in the pelts. Step forward so I can see you clearly. This is my first time meeting you face to face. Apologies for all the smoke and mirrors before. Giving you that message in my raven form, let me slip away with the rest of her scouts. (laughs) I recognise that look. You are indeed related by blood. Well, you certainly come across as fearless as your sibling. Your father, too, for that matter. And you hold yourself in a similar fashion. Confident. Focused. One hand ready on the trigger, and the other over a potion of some kind. I'd guess something that'd paralyze me in case I suddenly tried to turn you into a kitten or a lump of coal. (laughs) But you need not worry, Hunter. We're on the same side. I want to help your little family reunion, and to make things right for this land. Oh, now that we're done humping each other's legs, can we cut the courtesy crap and get moving? We can move a little further in, but we can't get too close without drawing attention to your pack. Anyone asks, you're just doing patrols after the little invasion at the castle, sniffing out any more assassins. I'm almost grateful for that little act of foolishness. It's helped to distract the Countess, keeping her focused on attacks from beyond her boundaries, instead of from within. Can do. Darrow, you take the Sagebloods and the Silverfangs and start patrolling around the eastern perimeter of the castle. We still have a short while before the choice is made, and know whether we need to make our move or not. The Blood Moon will be upon us soon. So, make camp, and watch for my sign. Yes, Chiefess. May your path be true. And your fangs bared. So, when we get the signal to attack, what are we aiming for? If, Scarlet, if you get the signal. Remember, it's up to the Countess's guest whether it's the time to strike. Her eyes will be on them. And don't let your anger cloud your common sense. <sighs> Fine. The guest and I will have the inside under control, but as soon as any alert is raised, the external guards will awaken and will rush to help the Countess. Scarlet, that's your job. Tear those monsters to pieces. Don't let any of them reach her. Those grotesque bat creatures, with three rows of teeth, massive, leathery wings, and claws like razors. (laughs) Simple enough. Hunter, we'll be counting on you helping us by shooting them out of the sky when they awaken. Here, these will help. They're crossbow bolts, tipped with silver and the wood has been treated with holy oil. Consider them a gift of good faith. And 
what will you be doing, Shiloh? Having tea with that creepy maid? She's stronger than she seems, but she's just one of the Countess's toys. I'll be doing my best to make sure the guests and I make it out alive. Because I'm going to burn the castle to the ground. If we successfully usurp the Countess from her seat of power, it will shake the vampire court to its knees. And with the magic of this land put back into the hands of those who are in harmony with it and know how to use it safely, we can fortify ourselves against any future attempts of conquest. And alongside you, Scarlet, and your family, Hunter, we will rebuild Velsvania into the kingdom it's supposed to be. And bit by bit, build ourselves up so that no vampire would ever dare to step into our kingdom again. Oh, my love. Uh, <clears throat> forgive my bedraggled appearance. I, I didn't expect to see you. Uh, yes, I suppose I have been out of sight for quite some time. These grotesque burns are taking longer to heal than I expected. And I couldn't stand... Being in that room any longer. I missed you, and I didn't want to waste any more time lying in my bed, drinking my woes away. I wanted to stretch my legs a little, enjoy some music, before returning to my room. Why, what are you doing here? You were hoping to join me for dinner. I'm not going to lie, my darling. I'd enjoy that greatly. But this is unexpected of you. You... You missed me as well. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Not to sound bitter... But you seem to be enjoying your time alone. Shiloh is an excellent source of conversation. And I thought... I, I didn't want your nights to be spent looking at something so grotesque. You don't mind the way I look? That's kind of you to say... Even if it is a lie. Come, let me take your arm while we walk. Let's make our way through the castle on the way to my chambers. Serafina will have our meals ready there for us by the time we arrive. Now then, shall we? Ah, the ballroom. Do you remember the first time we dined together? How we danced all night under the light of the moon. Though it took a little encouragement on my part to get you to move with me. With each dance we shared, you became a little more graceful on your feet. A little more intimate with your hands. You were highly skilled before you came here, but now your talents have become so wonderfully more attuned. Would you care to dance with me again? Lovely. Hold me close. Let me rest my cheek to your chest so that I may listen to your heart. Hmm. 
It's so much calmer. Has your anger for me gone? Or have you learned to numb yourself to it? Is it strange to say I don't really care anymore? I... I just want each moment to last as long as possible. I said I'd make her final days in my castle Vondras. But look at me now. Look at you. This is far from the splendor I promised you. You deserve so much more. More time to live. More time to love. I... I wish that were the case, my dearest. But... After all this time, and despite my proclamation, I've decided not to kill you. I see that look in your eyes, but hush, my love. I will explain in just a moment. It's a discussion that requires a little more privacy. Let me wrap my arms around you. Fly with me to my chambers. I want to make every moment tonight last. <sighs> what did I say? Our dinner, ready on silver platters for us. Roast venison with potatoes and red wine for you. A full-bodied 33-year-old vintage for me. We have the entire night to enjoy ourselves. So, let's make up for lost time. Shall we dine? Or would you be right to let it go a little cold while we enjoy ourselves in other ways? <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. You're certain that my face doesn't disgust you? I'm so relieved to hear that, my love. I've been wanting to kiss you for far too long, but I was so worried he wouldn't find me beautiful anymore, that you would flinch at the thought of my lips on your skin. Like before... All this madness unfurled. Lie back and wrap your arms around me. Just enjoy the soft touch of my fingertips upon your skin. I've missed you so very much. You've made my dreary little corner of the world so wonderfully warm. I'm so grateful for every moment spent with you, even our initial violent encounter. My home, this castle, it takes and it takes. I'm honestly surprised that you're still standing, my darling. Still able to dance with me. Still able to run your fingers through my hair so gently. Just like that. My former lovers would have been bedridden by now. Little more than withering husks, fading with each passing hour, practically ghosts of their former selves. 
but not you, my fearsome hunter. No, they would not be weakened by the intense hunger of my kiss. By the end, I wouldn't even drink from them for fear of their life slipping away so quickly. It's something intangible, something I don't have any control over. You were so certain that I would be your end here. Well, you're not completely wrong, my love. When you first came here, I fully intended on ending your short life if you stepped out of line or continued to resist my charms. I thought that if this woeful place wasn't what killed you slowly over time, then I'd be merciful and end your suffering, removing a meddlesome threat to my rule while still enjoying the pleasure of your exhilarating company for a short while. No. Even if you had run away after that daring first encounter, your fate would have likely been the same. One year later, death would have claimed you. Not with feminine fangs or furred ferocity, but with fragrance. The moment you cross the threshold, their essence entwined you in their thorns. That scent has seeped into every fibre of your being, the powerful and deadly blue roses of my estate. Their perfume is poisonous to mortal beings. I've tried to burn them away, tear every last blossom and bud with my own claws, but no matter what I tried, nothing worked. Shallow insisted that there was nothing to be done. Being a witch makes her immune, as does being undead or a beautiful little toy. All it takes is one breath, which you took when you intruded upon my home. And I was certain that after one short year, you too would be claimed by their sickness and sweetness. But no, here you lie, heart still beating just as fiercely, hands just as strong. Your hunter's constitution seemingly makes you immune to the roses. Something completely unexpected. Things have changed. My heart has changed. And I can't bear the thought of losing you. My dearest, my darling, my hunter, I don't want you to leave me after a year. Stay with me, here in my castle. Stand at my side. Be welcome in my bed. Make your home within my arms, now and forever. And perhaps in time, the thought of becoming an awe-inspiring immortal wouldn't be so bad. Together, we could bring wondrous change to the vampire court, strip away the old, gruesome traditions, and bring those ancient fools into a new age. You don't have to decide tonight, but know that I have never made this offer to another. I've never wanted another as much as I have wanted you. You won't leave me, will you? This castle is so cold, so empty, and you're so wonderfully warm. I can't begin to think of a future without you. My darling, oh, what, what 
What's wrong? Oh, you're so tired. It's all right. I am too. As always, oh, tomorrow. Hold me close and let us rest. I. Beautiful. Oh, my mistress. What lovely hair you have. What soft skin. I, I, I wish I could feel you again. Taste you again. Breathe you in again. Just sleep, 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 rest. By tomorrow evening, everything will be set right. I'm glad you are. Don't struggle. You may be strong enough to break through simple leather straps, but I highly doubt that you can break out of these chains. They're tough enough to hold back a fully transformed werewolf, and we both know you're not that strong. The Countess is fine, though I suspect you don't actually care for her. She's fast asleep in her chambers, where she should be, resting, healing that perfect face. I said going for a walk around the castle wouldn't be a good idea. But no, she didn't heed my advice. Again? But no matter, just lie still and let me do my work. I would normally promise to make this as painless as possible. But of all of the Countess's guests who have ended up here, you're my least favourite. And because you've been such an ir 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 irritating thorn in my side, I'm going to have a little fun with you before you take your final breath. Just a few little cuts here and there to make you squirm like the pathetic little pet that you are. I must say, it's refreshing that you're not screaming your head off. Unlike the others. Thankfully, we're so far beneath the castle that no one can hear you. So feel free to scream your lungs out if you so desire, while you still can. How did you fall asleep so quickly? Ah, my, how calm you are. Asking questions, even when faced with the inevitability of your slow, painful death. I came across an interesting little spell in Shiloh's grimoire 
while carefully cleaning her tower, and quickly made a copy. I have been such a sweet, subservient little doll all these years. Shiloh doesn't bat an eye when I come to clean her rooms. I had planned to put a paralytic in your food. It worked on all the others. But thanks to that foolish assassin, we all discovered that something like that will have little to no effect on you. But the spell wasn't as potent as I'd hoped. No matter, no matter. My preparations are almost complete. What am I preparing for? Your end and the beginning of another year. My mistress will be upset for a short while, but in time she'll return to her senses and come seeking comfort in my arms. Oh, I'm sure she'll be quite heartbroken that you've disappeared into the night right after she professed her undying affections to you. After she told you that she cares for you so much, she's willing to put herself at risk by letting you live. What a heartless lover you are. <sighs> this blood running down your chest. This is what she loves, not you. She craves your blood, your life. Blood is everything to her, even if she says otherwise. <laughs> and even if she were to make you like her, which I highly doubt you'll allow, sooner or later she would have realized her foolishness. I'm just tidying up her little mistake before it happens. You feel it too. Good. It's the magical ley lines beneath our feet, crackling and spitting with anger. <laughs> Oh, how they hate me. After abusing them all these long years. But I'll twist them and choke them and hurt them as much as I need to. For as long as I need to. Just like I did all those centuries ago when I first built this doll. Oh, that look in your eyes. <laughs> yes, you're beginning to understand. When I felt myself beginning to wither, the scent of roses choking in my lungs, like all her other lovers did, with the exception of you, I tapped into the power of the ley lines, learned how to play them like a magnificent, complex harp, and found a way to tie my soul to the beautiful creation I gifted to the Countess. The moment I died, I opened these pretty glass eyes and was there to comfort my mistress, my beloved Stefania Swan. 
time passed and she kept me close, and despite the soft porcelain of my face and hands, my lingering soul allowed me to feel her hair on my fingertips, her lips brushing against mine. She was so achingly careful with me, terrified of breaking the beautiful doll gifted by someone who adored her. But little by little, I felt my soul weakening. My movements became stiff. My hands became clumsy. The shell was beginning to fall apart. And I realized I needed more. So when she grew bored of me, turned me into a maid, and found another lovesick fool to draw affection from, they too began to weather and I carried their trembling body and returned to my old laboratory beneath the castle. The Countess couldn't bring herself to throw it away after I died. I plucked at the ley lines once more, and when they breathed their last, <sighs> as it turns out, Mortal souls make excellent fuel for magical constructs. I can't wait to see what a hunter's soul does. I made those ley lines sing their song of pain and agony again and again. And tonight, just for you, hunter. I will make them shriek. Since you're not going to be fading into the night with peaceful grace, I'll just have to take matters into my own hands. So I can still be there to serve her every desire. Clean her sheets, help her bathe, watch over her while she sleeps. The time for questions is over, so do what you do best, and stay quiet. Where are my keys? <laughs> you repugnant, sly fingered serpent. You unworthy waste of blood. Like a good pet who's had their run. It's time for you to lay down and die. Put down that scalpel. Stop resisting. I need your soul. I I I need your senses. <laughs> Give up, Hunter. Give in. Give up. Give me your soul. <laughs> no, 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 no. I could hear the ley lines screaming. No. Uh, finally, my pendulum is working. No. Uh, it's so loud down here. No. And, and the Countess. No. My love, I could smell your blood, freshly no. spilt. No. Oh, gods. No. What no. happened here? No. Oh, my no. darling. No. <clears throat> You're no. hurt. No. No. I don't care if it's just no. a scratch. What? No. No. Serafina? No. No. 
Serafina, no. what have you done? No. 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 Nothing will come between us, Stefania. Not even a vampire hunter. You are everything. You are my world. Without you, I am nothing. I just wanted another, another, another chance for you to look at me the way you look at them. Wait, what are you talking about, Serafina? Yes, but that was the name you gave this doll when I gave it to you as a gift. My finest creation. I remember you said my talent was a gift from the heavens, and this doll was your perfect little angel, Seraphina. That's uh, that's impossible, uh, Annabelle. Annabelle de Onokur, is that really you? Hearing my true name fall from your perfect lips, it makes up for all of the silent agony that I endured all these years. Oh. My broken beauty, my Annabelle, I loved you so very much. Loved? <sighs> she was a most devout lover and an even better servant. Because she always remembered her place. Until now. A servant should never harm a guest. Now then, my darling. Let's get you properly tended to. Shilo, be a dear and clean up this mess. Do whatever you like with this doll. I have no further use for it. When you're done, start sending out your ravens to look for new servants. <sighs> Come with me, my darling. Let's get you cleaned up, and you can tell me everything that happened. This is... unexpected. But fortune smiles upon us. I'm going to keep this construction somewhere safe. She's one of the most valuable treasures in this entire castle, after all. In a couple of years, she might come in handy again. The moon is in place. The wolves are ready. The signs are clear. It's time, isn't it? Well, by this time tomorrow, you'd better be certain. Tomorrow night, Hunter. Tomorrow. <sighs> oh, my darling. I will never have enough of you. <laughs> mm. Would you mind opening the curtains for me? I want to look at the stars. Oh, is it the blood moon already? My sweet little werewolves will be having the time of their lives tonight. Oh, it's some kind of pagan festival. 
They make campfires in the forest, get drunk, and howl all night long. Something to do with the death of an ancestor, or honoring their long dead goddess. I just hope no unlucky souls get in their way. They tend to be a little on the savage side on nights like these. But don't fret, my love. Charlotte always makes sure they stay in line. Now, come back to bed. I love feeling your arms around me. Hmm? I did, didn't I? And I meant it too, my darling. I love you more than I have loved any other in my long, long life. Mm. Why do I love you? Because you're everything I want. And I know your life won't slip through my hands because of those accursed roses. You're strong, magnificent to behold, and warm. So very warm. Your blood is the richest, the finest I have ever tasted. And I want you at my side, now and always. No, not like Serafina. Well before I knew what she actually was. She was a gift, freely given and I treat my possessions however I please. She was an object, and she has outlived her purpose. So I discarded her. Have you forgotten that she sought to kill you and steal your soul? I doubt you wept for her. I certainly didn't. But you need not concern yourself with her fate, my love. Turn your gaze towards the future, our future. As equals? <laughs> My, you are just too adorable. What is wrong? <sighs> you may be a cut above the rest, but you're still only human with all of your mortal imperfections. I love you, but until you consent to become a vampire like myself, the power between us will always be at an imbalance. You will always be beneath me. <sighs> but in time, when the night comes that you consent to join me in the dance macabre of the vampire court, then, and only then, will you be truly worthy of standing by my side. <laughs> the Vampire King won't know what hit him. <clears throat> I hope I'm not interrupting. The Blood Moon is in position. The werewolves are drunk on her light. They're baring their teeth, and we are ready to strike. Keep your mind focused. Remember what she really is. Do not succumb to her charms. What say you, Hunter? I love you so much. You love me too, don't you? Hunter, are you ready to take this monster down? You do. Oh, my darling. Mm. I knew you felt the same. Let's go dancing in the ballroom. Uh, what? What is that? What in the hell is going on? No. No, 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 no. It's, it's the Vampire King. He's come to finish what he started. Get the rest. Get your weapons and stay behind me. We'll head downstairs and see what's going on. Sarah, damn it. Sh 
Shiloh, where are you? Shiloh! <gasps> I thought this time would be different. Because your life couldn't be stolen away from me. I thought that you would stay with me forever. I was a fool, wasn't I? <sighs> but the biggest fool was you for this repulsive betrayal. I offered you everything. Luxury and bottomless pleasure for a hundred lifetimes. An eternity spent at my side. The honor of being my most treasured, my most beloved possession. Of becoming one of us. A member of the highest aristocracy in the world. You refuse what others would kill for, have killed for. All you had to do was accept your place at my feet. We could have been magnificent together. And you throw it all away for this broken, grotesque world. For those stupid, selfish mortals who spend their lives crawling in the dirt. You are so much more than that. You are the only mortal who is truly worthy of my love. You will always be mine. Your body, your mind, your blood is mine. Even now as it wastefully splatters across the floor, every last drop is mine. Your blood is mine. The blood of the villagers is mine. The blood of your family is mine. <coughs> <laughs> For a moment there, I was almost compelled to catch you before your fall. You look rather lovely, lying amongst the rose bushes. <coughs> I... I don't know what hurts more. The pain of your betrayal or your blade. <sighs> I've had enough of this foolishness. I knew I shouldn't have played with my food. Cease this fight and kneel. You've become stronger, more resilient over this past year. <laughs> You were planning this from the start, weren't you? I should have known you were too good to be true. You never loved me, did you? Do it. Do it and end my endless centuries of loneliness. I don't know if that was mercy or poor aim, but I think I'll be taking my leave. Be wary, hunter, and never forget. You will... Always be mine. Hunter, where is the Countess? <clears throat> Fled, uh, are you sure? Well, at least you wounded her gravely. I'm sure she'll find some cave to slither into before dawn comes. Hmm? 
Oh, this isn't my blood. We lost a number of werewolves to the gargoyles protecting the castle. They'll join us in a moment. They're just busy picking off the last of the guards. <sighs> Good question, Hunter. I'm not quite sure what will happen to the Countess. She'll probably find another goddamn noble to bunk up with, but it'll take centuries before she can show her face in society again. The werewolves and I will set up patrols around the villages and towns to make sure she's not going to antagonize them. My witches are stationed along the borders of Velsvania to make sure the magical wards aren't penetrated. <laughs> We... We won, Hunter. I know this was a long time coming, and your patience was greatly appreciated, as was your betrayal. She almost seemed relieved. Honestly, that doesn't surprise me. Once she conquered Valsvania hundreds of years ago, her sole priorities were ruling, hoarding the wealth of the land, and finding new lovers to distract her from her boredom and loneliness. Boredom is dangerous when it comes to vampires. They become apathetic to the world around them, and overlook small instances that seem beneath their concern, often not realising the danger they're in, until it's already far too late. I can imagine that even though you defeated her, embarrassed her, there's some part of the Countess who found this whole ordeal amusing. And despite this, I remember the way she looked at you. Be on guard, but know that she truly loved you. Oh, Looks like someone took a tumble in the rose bushes. You have some petals still in your hair. Ah, the blue roses used to grow in abundance back in Umbramorn. I look forward to cultivating them again. The Countess forbade me from doing so. As you already know, they hold great power. But after all you've been through, you deserve to know that which only wolves and witches speak of. Would you like me to tell you the tale of where they come from? Well, not even I know for certain. But the legend goes that countless centuries ago, back when the world was young, when the first mortals lived in terror of the darkness of the woods, more than they do now, something, or someone, tore their way out of the ancient, untouchable realms of the divine. This wound between worlds bled across the land and stained the roses of the forest a piercing, unnatural blue, imbuing them with power both sacred and profane. The scars left behind became the ley lines. We witches discovered them a few thousand years ago and established our covens atop them. The roses are powerful, and you've seen for yourself what the ley lines can do when their power is abused. All witches theorise about what it was that clawed its way out into our world, and the terrible power they're capable of. From time to time, a witch will say that late at night, they've seen a silhouette in the forest. A woman, with eyes as blue as the roses. However, even after all these centuries, no one has yet conversed with her. But now is not the time for old fairy tales. We have bigger things to concern ourselves with. <sighs> well, is the bitch dead? She's taken care of, but make sure your pack knows to keep an eye out for her, or any other allies. I've got Seraphina's remains locked away securely. So for now, the danger is past. <clears throat> well... I was hoping to add a skull to my collection, but I'll guess that I'll have to wait. Don't worry, we'll sniff her out. With the witches back atop the ley lines, the werewolves freely roaming the woods, and the hunters 
helping to keep the peace among the people. Valsvania is in our hands again, my dear friends. Your family is waiting for you in the courtyard, Hunter. Finally, you are free.